With Mario Kart 8's second DLC pack coming soon, it won't be long until we're playing the 8 new tracks, but we really can't wait that long so we decided to take a closer look at each one in a track breakdown. This time we're taking a look at Big Blue which originally appeared in the F-Zero series, and we want to thank Ryan Malice from Brain Scratch Comms for his help with some of the finer details. During the sequence that shows off bits of the track before the race, we can see that the buildings are somewhat similar to their appearance in F-Zero GX mainly white with some blue streaks. However, unlike previous big blue tracks, the planet is made up of more than just water and buildings. We can see that much of the track is built along a large island filled with foliage. There are even floating islands that can be seen in the background. This big blue feels lived in as several ships fly by, though they're not F-Zero racers. In fact, thanks to Nintendo's trailer, we actually see a close-up view of one of these ships. The design is actually quite close to James McCloud's ship, the Little Wyvern. But the far off look at the track also shows the finish line which almost looks to be a typical UFO with the way it's hovering. In fact, the way that it's hovering in exactly the same spot is kind of incredible considering the barest movement in any other direction would rip the track apart. But that's future tech for ya. As the race begins, the camera pans toward the racers like always. But as it gets closer to the starting line, we see a few more details. Perhaps the biggest is the logo that can be seen above the F-Zero sign. It mentions something called True Planet, yet that doesn't seem to reference anything. F-Zero, as a whole, doesn't have much in the way of world building. It's typically just about fast racing with crazy characters and futuristic locations. So it could just be a network made up specifically for Mario Kart 8. The rest of the starting line is mostly future tech with little reference to anything else. However, we can see that Toads are behind the racers in their own racing helmets. They don't seem to be doing anything in particular, though perhaps they're a group of mechanics. Another neat little detail is the holographic line that marks the start, which reads out both Mario Kart and F-Zero. The race itself takes place entirely in anti-gravity, with it being a point-to-point -point race like Rainbow Road 64 and Mount Wario. We shoot forward on the track and see a couple of other track details. One is another large screen on the left, though this one is showing the finish line. However, this also has the True Planet logo appear again, which provides further evidence that this is the network that's broadcasting the race. Above the track, we can see some more ships flying by, and even the moon. Finally, there's a sign on the right that reads, Welcome To. We just don't know what it's welcoming us to. More than likely, the full sign just says, Welcome to Big Blue. Further along, as we take the first turn, we see another screen showing off the waterway from later in the race. We can also see that there's a water wheel, which probably provides power for the nearby buildings. As we round the corner, though, we see a boost pad and the return of the charge tracks from Mute City. Like that track, this will be the only way to earn coins. Rounding out the turn, we come to a slight jump right before the track splits. On the right is a charge track, but it looks like the longer path. The path on the left has no charge track, but it's likely a more direct route. But what's really cool about this section is how it gives us a better view of Big Blue itself. Along with the woods and waterfalls, we can see a bridge in the middle of the ocean, and on the other side is a city. It's just further detail for a track that could have been simply dotted with buildings and endless ocean. At any rate, both paths lead to a boost pad jump where the track comes back together. It's here that we see two new gimmicks. First up are the obvious conveyor belts. We've seen this concept before on Rainbow Road, but those would change direction at regular intervals. There's no sign of that happening with these. It's all a matter of staying on the conveyor that pushes you forward. However, you have to watch out for the second gimmick. The blue walls that we see here are electrified. Running into them causes a shock that visibly slows you down. Drifting through this area will have to be done carefully in order for it to be the most effective. After the conveyors, we get another short hop that leads to a right turn with more conveyor belts. However, if you have a speed boosting item, you can cut across the inside for a sharper turn. When we get to the other side of the turn, we get a good look at more of the surrounding area. We can actually see other turns in the track, as well as normal highways with cars traveling across them. It gives the sense that even with the focus on super fast racing, people do still live here. The rest of this section has more conveyor belt turns with each one having an inside track that can be cut across with the proper item. It eventually straightens out towards a hang gliding section where we see part of where we came from like the split track that ended with the boost pad and even the origin of the split itself. On the other side of the gliding section are more charge pads and the point where the second lap begins. 
The lap marker actually has a small boost pad as well that launches racers off a small jump and into a waterway. Staying in the waterway will provide a slight speed boost, but this part also shows us the best look at the city in the background. Continuing down the waterway, we reach a jump where the track splits. This opens up into a waterfall canyon area that we saw glimpses of during the track introduction. The area seems to be some kind of research facility. We see spherical buildings near the waterfalls with some kind of structure running between them. There's also a more standard building on top of the cliff in the background. And like other water sections in Mario Kart 8, there's a rainbow that can be seen near the waterfall in the back. Despite the track split, there doesn't seem to be any major differences between the paths. Both have waterways and follow the same basic twists and turns. One just goes higher than the other. But at the end of each one is another jump into a boost ring. In a nice touch, the rings are labeled with big blue on them. The track converges once again with more charge pads on either side. From that point, the track is just a bunch of twists and turns where the player has to do their best to stay in the water. It eventually ends in another hang gliding section. But this section also rotates both the camera and the track at the same time as you speed toward the other side. This puts you on a slight bank that leads into the third lap, where it also has a small boost pad as we cross. In a great touch, an announcer actually calls out just like in F-Zero X. The third lap features more conveyor belts with an added twist. There are boost pads on the conveyors, so players can shift between the lanes in order to maintain a boost. However, the track is also shifting lanes as we travel along it, eventually putting us completely upside down with the water above. Once the shifting track ends, there's a slight jump on either side as the track levels out. It then curves left where there's a choice between more charge pads or a peg in the center that players can use for a slight boost before they turn right. This leads into the final track split where the players are now racing skyward. Like the previous split, there doesn't seem to be any major differences between the choices. As the track is coming back together though, we can see a hovering platform on the right displaying rotating screens of the race. But on top of that are the same kind of toads from the beginning of the race. This looks to be some kind of garage as there are several cars on the platform as well. We just don't see any toolboxes or other equipment for working on them. Continuing on, there's a short jump as the track begins to swerve back and forth. However, a speed boosting item will allow racers to cut straight across. But another cool detail are the displays that show how much farther it is from the finish line. 300, 200, 100, and 50 until we finally reach the end. And as we cross the finish line, we can see toes hanging out on the walkways, further showing that this is indeed vertical for them. Big Blue is looking to be an incredibly solid track that pays homage to a classic while also updating it for Mario Kart 8. We can't wait to try it for ourselves. But that's all for this track breakdown. Make sure to stay tuned to Game Explain for more track analyses for Mario Kart 8's DLC and other things gaming too.